Good morning, Central Florida. Welcome to another episode of Dollars and Cents, coming from the Nelson Financial Planning Recording Studio. Hope everybody is having a good week. Definitely a hot one. As you can tell, Joel Garris is off this week, and uh, we've got a couple of guest hosts. Our usual team of myself, Rob Field, and to my left, or coming out of the right side of your stereo speakers, if you're listening to FM, Christina Lamb. Good morning, everyone. Christina, thanks again for uh, helping me co-host this show. We got a got a nice segment, a nice couple of segments set up to uh, to talk to some people and uh, enlighten our listeners. Um, this has been a, a good week. We had the Fourth of July. We're in the first week of July. I uh, was doing a little bit of dog sitting for my son while he was out of town, and uh, so I got outside, took some some walks with the dog, went to the dog park. I can tell you this: it is extremely hot. I think everybody has noticed that. I um, hope everybody stayed rested and, uh, and and had some fun, but was also able to avoid that heat. Just uh, I saw statistics earlier in the week that uh, a couple of days ago was the hottest day on Earth in recorded history. And I, I believe it. If you're in Florida, Texas, anywhere in the Southwest, you know that we're, we're having some record heats. Uh, Got to be real careful. The funny thing I noticed, though, is that the average temperature – across the world is only 63 degrees. So when I saw that, I was like, well, that's not that hot. But of course we've got, you know, what are heat in the, in the high nineties. And then you're pairing that up with Antarctica and some other countries that are down in the twenties. But you know, when people talk about global warming, you kind of, kind of have to pay attention. Um, how about yourself? Did you have a pretty good 4th of July? We did. We did. Um, we actually did something completely new this year. We did nothing. <laughs> We normally have a big barbecue and a bunch of people over, um, but it's it's been a pretty busy June for us, and so my my son was out of town. Um, he went on a trip with some friends, and me and my husband really just wanted a little R&R, and, you know, it's funny, you brought up, you know, the heat, and, you know, you were uh, babysitting your, your grand dog, <laughs> and so I took Bella on a hike, and we, we hike all the time. It was a two-mile hike. And it was, she couldn't even make it. Like, it was so hot as we were walking back the last, like, half mile. Anytime she saw a little shade spot, she would, like, lay down. And, like, we've gone on seven-mile hikes, five-mile hikes. It's it's not a big deal for her. But just the, the absolute heat was, I think, kind of getting to her a little bit. Yeah, it's, um, I, I definitely recommend if you're, you're down in our area of Florida, central Florida, you got to avoid doing activity outside in the middle of the day. You got to stay hydrated, drink lots of water, mm-hmm. and uh, keep in mind that we're just in early July. It gets a little hotter as we go into late oh. July and into August. So, uh, you know, everybody take care of yourself. This is going to be a tough, tough summer. Um, speaking of the summer, I I took a vacation, and um, I thought that turned out really well. Have you? Did you take a vacation this summer yet? I did. We actually we took our vacation earlier on. Um, we kind of did a big one this year. We went to Hawaii. Nice. And, um, yeah, it was, a, it was a great trip. It was my husband, my 13-year-old son, and we actually brought my mother-in-law along. That was one of the places that was on her bucket list. Um, so we wanted the opportunity to, you know, for her to see that as well. Um, it's, it's one of my favorite places. It's just absolutely stunningly beautiful. My husband likes to say, no matter where you look in Hawaii, you have a great view. You know, you always have the ocean to one side of you with beautiful lush beaches and palm trees, and you look inland, and there's mountains, and they're they're also very lush and green. Um, it, it's absolutely just gorgeous, and and the vibe is it's just it's so chill and relaxing. You just you can't help but like immerse yourself in in that sort of lifestyle and, and attitude. So we we had a great time. One of my favorite memories is we went to Volcanoes National Park on the big island. And um, it's it's a a unique experience because it's sort of different than anything else landscape-wise you've ever seen. So it's all sort of black from the the dried-up lava, um, but there's some trees mixed in the further out you go. Um, The way the park is set up, you kind of go down this really long winding road and you see all these lava fields from different years, and you can look back and see them kind of dripping down the mountain, like <laughs> already hot or no, cold. <laughs> but as you go down, you get to the water, and um, when we went 15 years ago, you could actually see the lava flow going into the ocean. It was not active while we were there this year. Um, 
or why we visited. Um, however, it, it's just an amazingly beautiful site. And turns out, while it wasn't active the day we were there, the next day it erupted. So it was kind of crazy. And we saw some of the what they call bog. Um, and that's like the smoke from the volcano kind of overcasting some of the islands. So pretty crazy trip. <laughs> wow. That's, yeah. That sounds very, very nice. Yeah, I read about that, uh, the, the, the volcano that had erupted. I, was, I knew you guys were going to be in that area. Obviously, it's not. It's a pretty large area, not one island, but uh, <laughs> yeah. glad, I'm glad that you got to experience that. That's really nice. How about your vacation, Rob? How did that go? Well, as a wise scholar once said, I'm on vacation every single day because I love my occupation. Is that Dirty Heads? <laughs> that is Dirty Heads. Uh, I, I thought you'd recognize that because that's actually a band that uh, you introduced me to a little while back. And that's sort of, a, you know, I love my job, but I do love vacation. So <laughs> I, I thought I'd just throw that out there. But yeah, our vacation was kind of a family vacation. We, um, every summer we go to the west side of Florida, down into the Indian Rocks area, a little south of Clearwater Beach. Always get a condo, three bedroom condo, right on the beach. And then we just get out there and enjoy that beautiful sand as much as we can. Watch the sun going up, turn to the other side, watch it go down. Uh, I'm, I'm a big seafood fan, so nice place to be if I want to eat some food. We um, brought the dog. My son has a dog, and uh, I love dogs. I'm just not in a position to have my own. So I, it's kind of like rent a dog. We'll bring that dog whenever <laughs> we can. And uh, that gets me out, gets some walks going every morning. And there was a dog park across the street that we were able to go to. Uh, brought in my daughter and her boyfriend from Alabama came in, and then my son, his fiance, who live in Orlando, they took some time off, and uh, we all just congregated there, had it for about a week. Uh, it was just very relaxing. Luckily, things at work had kind of slowed down a little bit, so I was really able to unwind. The, um, you know, we, we, we talk about vacations, and it, it is obviously a lot of fun, and yours sounded wonderful. I'd love to do something like that. To make that happen, as much fun as I had, I did have to kind of start a little early and, and do some work. I couldn't just wake up the day you know, we had the condo and suddenly everybody could be there and everybody would be ready to go and, t and take the time off. So we did have to kind of plan ahead. Um, and I, I'd like to say that, you know, when you're planning your vacation, it does require you to think ahead, think of the, the, who's going to be involved, what are you trying to achieve. That kind of carries over to what you and I do on a daily basis, and that's helping people plan uh, for their financials, for their investments, for upcoming retirement. So, you know, just like you plan for a vacation, you got to put in the same kind of effort into planning for your future, especially on the investment side. Um, and you, you got to be, you, you got to think retirement and how you're going to get there and, and plan ahead for that. No, absolutely. I think a lot of planning goes into a trip and we certainly had a bunch uh, for our trip. Um, you know, you're pre-planning, figuring out what you want to do, and then there's actually starting to implement and make reservations. Um, we probably started six months before we traveled, which is kind of late, I think. But, you know, things book up, and if you have certain activities that you want to do and things you want to achieve, the further ahead you plan, the easier it is to get there. So I think, you know, taking the time to implement a plan is very, very important. Yeah, very much so. There's a lot of analogy between, uh, you know, planning that vacation and, and planning your finances. And we're going to go into a little more detail of that. You are listening to Dollars and Cents. Stick around. We come back after the break. We're going to talk a little bit about how to really address and prepare for your retirement. And don't let it get kind of catch you off guard. Stay tuned. Be back shortly. All right. Welcome back to Dollars and Cents where we help you make sense out of all of life's decisions involving your dollars. We are Central Florida's longest-running radio program. It's coming to you on a host of radio stations throughout Central Florida. We're also one of the top 25 financial planning podcasts on the World Wide Web with over 20,000 downloads of our program. So be sure to subscribe to our channel on your favorite social media or podcast platform of choice. If you have any trouble finding us, just go to our website, nelsonfinancialplanning.com. Look in the upper right-hand corner of our website. Click on the icon that looks most familiar to you that you like to use, and then you're going to get instantly connected to our channel. You can watch this show, previous shows that we've done. Again, my name is Rob Field. I am a certified financial fiduciary and also a national Social Security advisor with Nelson Financial Planning. To my left, Christina Lamb, a fellow certified financial fiduciary and also an IRS enrolled agent. 
Again, Christina, thanks for joining me and helping me co-host the show. Always fun to hang out with you, Rob, and do the show. I enjoy it. I always remind you guys, we got a team of certified financial fiduciaries that are standing by this week help you develop a successful and cost-effective financial plan that's going to produce superior investment results and provide you with peace of mind for the future. Uh, Previous to the break, we were kind of talking a little bit about our vacations. We want to kind of let you know a little bit about how preparation is also very important when we're talking about your financial future, especially as you are addressing retirement. Wow, Rob. I mean, it is just a ton of planning uh, going into vacation and also into retirement. Did you know that one in five people actually spend more time planning for their vacation than they do for their retirement? Which, as much as I love vacation, it's one of my favorite things. It's one of the things I work for. Uh, I think my retirement's a little bit more important than that. (laughs) So when was the last time did you look at your retirement plan? Did you just set it and forget it? Um, Did you think that putting monthly contributions in each month is enough? Well... It's not. So today we're going to look at um, a big part of financial planning um, that can help make you successful, and that's looking at budgets. And you cannot wait till the last minute to start. It is crucial to start as soon as possible. No doubt about it. We, um, you know, when it comes to budgeting and preparing for savings, we kind of get these standard two questions that happens to us a lot. You know, how much should I save? How much do I need for retirement? Neither one of these are easy answers. Um, You know, they're great questions and and should be addressed as we get closer towards coming up with a real plan for retirement. Uh, Typically, you know, you kind of want to think about where you want to end up and you're going to back into uh, coming up with some kind of calculation that lets you know, okay, if this is where I want to end up and here's where I am today, how do I fill in the gap? And so, you know, that's something that we take um, very serious and it's part of our job and and our goals to help you hit those numbers. you know, we've got some clients that have, uh, you know, had a well-laid plan and didn't stick to it. It didn't work out well. We've had clients that um, waited and waited and waited, but then got real serious. And we're, we're also still could get those people to the kind of place they needed to be for retirement. So, you know, it's all about communication. Absolutely. I think on average, if you had to pick a number, um, I would say you should be saving about 10% of your annual income just to go towards retirement savings. Now, it fluctuates a little different based on your spending and how much you make and how much you plan to have for retirement when you started. But I think if you if you had to pick a number, 10% is a nice place to start to make sure you're, you're going to have enough to retire. It seems like a good number. So what me and Rob did is we ran some scenarios to kind of show you what it would be like if you started saving earlier on versus waiting to the last minute. So both of these scenarios assume an 8% rate of return compounding um, on the investment. So if you started when you were 25 and invested for 45 years, which got you to 65, then... And you put in $275 a month, you would end up with close to a million dollars. That only makes your contributions $132,000. Now, the difference between waiting, so this scenario, you start at 50 because you weren't planning properly, um, giving you 15 years to get to 65, again, assuming 8% you would have to put in $2,750 per month to get to that same million dollars because you're doing it in the 15-year period versus the 14-year period. It also makes your contribution amount, more importantly, almost $500,000. So you went in from actually putting in $132,000 overall to almost $500,000 because you waited. So, you know, it's just cost you so much more because of the compounding interest and what you can get from compounding interest. That's a big, big difference. I mean, 275, if you were budgeting, 275 is a doable number. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But I mean, if if you sat down and said, okay, here's my goal. Here's where I want to end up. I kind of haven't started for a while. And the answer is, well, if you can start kicking in 2,700 a month, that's a it's a big pill to swallow. Yeah, that changes. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a game changer right there. That's rough. Yeah, I always like to encourage people. I think it's it's important to start the habit. So even if you could only put in $50 or $100, 
that's more important than doing nothing, having some sort of attainable goal to start investing. Yeah, it seems like the earlier you start and the, the sooner you start putting even the smallest amount of money, you still pull it off. I mean, if you can, you got a plan get you to a close to a million dollars by retirement, that's not a bad plan. No. That will, will work. Absolutely, absolutely. So interesting enough with savings, um, U.S. citizens overall, for the most part, only save about 1.5% of their annual income, even though we have the world's largest GDP. Now, how we compare to the rest of the world, we're, we're in the bottom 10. It, it's kind of embarrassing. Um, the top, believe it or not, was Norway at 22.4%, followed by Chile and South Korea. So wow. as, as U.S. citizens, we are, we are definitely not the best savers. That's a shame because we're pretty good at spending. Yes, um, we're probably mm -hmm. very at the top That's of a, the spending I would, list. I would think so. <laughs> you know, as, as we were um, preparing for this show, we knew we wanted to talk, a lot, uh, talk about uh, addressing your financial plan, getting you to a certain point, and, and we're kind of looking upon how a budget – that's designed to help you today as well as help you tomorrow should get you there. So Chris, Christine and I, we were trying to think of a, something kind of catchy. So we came up with this acronym for the word budgets using the letters B U D G E T S to stand for different things to kind of help you as the listener think about areas you should address when it comes time to putting together your financial plan budget. So we took budgets and then we kind of said, okay, let's give each letter sort of a, a topic. And we went with, uh, B for balance. We went. We took the letter U for understanding. The letter D would be for addressing debt. Letter G would be for your goals. And then the letter E would be for your expectations. The letter T would be for transitioning. And then the letter S would be for solutions. So we had B, U, D, G, E, T, S. And we're going to kind of go through each one, kind of tell you our thoughts on that. We started off with B for balance, and, and to, to us, that's kind of balancing things that are going on today with things that are going to be going on tomorrow, kind of balancing your income, the money coming in with expenses, the money going out, and then balancing your long-term savings with just your basic monthly cost. And so you want to kind of also balance your sources of money, income, and things like that. So you want to review your savings. You want to look at your particular investments that you have invested in. And you also want to look at your retirement plans, something you might have through work. And you want to coordinate these types of options. And so, you know, when you're doing a budget and you're starting off with in that area, the first thing we want to recommend is that you kind of pay yourself first. It's easy to set aside all the things you think you need to put your money towards and then put in whatever's left over, have that be what you invest. And it really needs to be flipped. You need to make it a priority to put the amount of money you're going to put away the 275 or the 2750 put that at the top of your list if you possibly can. And I like to to get to that point with using savings baskets. I'm a big fan of once you save for retirement, you don't touch that money no matter what. So the way I use savings baskets, and some people actually have baskets and they like to put their money um, cash um, in baskets. Um, but we'll, we'll hit on that a little bit more when we come back from the break. Thank you, Christina. Stick around. We're going to go through budgets and kind of give you some ideas of things to target when you're building your financial planning budget. Listen to Dollars and Cents. We'll be right back after the break. All right. Welcome back. You're listening to Dollars and Cents here in Central Florida. Hope you are enjoying your week and the weekend. Again, I'm Rob Field. One of your co-hosts next to me, Christina Lamb, the other co-host. Joel's out. We'll be back soon. We were in the middle of talking about budgets and what each letter would mean. We just were kind of about to wrap up the letter B, which was for balance. So before the break, we were discussing having savings baskets. And so some people like a, a tangible basket where they can put cash in. Myself, I just have online savings accounts where I put different money for different things or investment accounts. So I have three baskets. Um, number one is my emergency savings. Um, which is important to kind of start with because you, you, you don't want to touch baskets for anything other than what they're for. The other is my retirement basket. And then last basket for me is my travel fund. <laughs> um, but that can be whatever you want it to be. You know, Rob might have a boat fund. Some people love to shop so they could have a shopping fund. Um, but each one of these baskets represents something unique. So you don't use that basket except for what it's for. 
Makes sense. Moving down our acronym from our budgets, we're, but we're going to go to you for understanding. To us, this is kind of like understanding your current situation, understanding what is your knowledge of investments, and then understanding what is right for you. And then it comes down to risk tolerance and, and what is important to you. So I think this comes to needs versus wants. And it's, it's important to understand those when you make financial decisions, especially when you're trying to stick to your budget. So needs would be like food, shelter, utilities, transportations. These are things you need to survive and work and, and you know, kind of get along with life. Wants are trips, um, RVs, um, you know, maybe a boat or, you know, extravagant things that you definitely don't need, but you, you, you would like to have them. So, for example, you know, you're going shopping and, you know, you go to the food store and that's a want. Well, then you go, you know, next door and there's a shoe store. And you need to stop and ask yourself when you're in the shoe store, if you find a pair that you like, you know, do I really need this? And, you know, is that getting me towards my goal? Or would I rather put that money towards something else that's more important to me? Because the shoe is very short term. So our goals generally are, are much more longer term. Those are good points. I kind of have a rule that I follow, and that's kind of I keep a shopping list of two different things. One is the needs, which I kind of call my grocery list. And um, I'm real bad about walking into my local grocery store and seeing something that's brand new that looks great. And I usually am hungry when I'm going there, and I end up I could end up buying a lot more things than I really need. So I put it on my grocery list. If it's on the list, I can get it. If I see something I like, but it's not on the list, can't get it that day, go home, put it on the list. If it survives, maybe I'll get it the next time. I do the same thing on my wants because um, I like a lot of different shoes. Like I'm the guy that thinks, well, I need a pair of shoes that's for tennis. I need a pair of shoes that's for basketball. I need a pair of shoes that are casual. I need a pair of shoes that are dressed. I've got a motorcycle. I think I need to have a pair of motorcycle boots. And so um, I can get sucked into that especially with the motorcycle. It can be accessories. It can be jackets, T-shirts, gloves, whatever. So I have a list. And if it's on the list, I will address it. If it's not on the list, uh, on the wants list, it's got to survive a whole month on the list before I'll actually buy it. So it helps kind of regulate me and keeps me from doing impulse buys. I think I need to take you shopping with me, Rob. <laughs> I mean, grocery store, shop everywhere, because I, I have a list too, but I don't make myself stick to the list. I definitely buy other stuff as well. I like to eat, so it's, <laughs> everything in there looks really good, so I understand. We, um, let's move on down. So we're, we're working the acronym budgets, B-U-D. That brings us to debt. And what we're talking about there is kind of reviewing your short-term debt versus your long-term obligations. And what are the real costs of that and, and how that might come into play? So with debt, I think, you know, you don't want to have a debt sort of lifestyle to where you're constantly buying things and buying them on debt. So whether that's credit cards or loans or things like that, if you're always having a payment towards something, you're you're never really going to get ahead because there's always interest involved um, when you have a payment like that. So uh, one interesting uh, statistic that I saw, the Fed released uh, a few months ago their Q1 um, report, and Americans have $98 billion in credit card debt. That is almost $1 trillion. I mean, it's, it's just an extraordinary amount, and it keeps going up every year. And what's interesting this year, two things, is number one, delinquency rates are rising, which is just more interest, as well as people are not paying down their debt. So what we normally see is, of course, at Christmas time, everybody puts a little bit more on their credit card, and then they slowly start paying it off that first quarter, and that rate drops down. Well, that's not happening this year. People are not paying down their debt, and the amount of uh, credit card, the interest on the credit cards is ridiculous. And it's also going up due to inflation. Correct. It's... um. You know, we the, the interest rates are, are right now are, are a big topic, and um, if anything is really showing the increase of what interest rates can do, and it's it's on the the interest charge on your credit card. No, absolutely, and and unfortunately, we're hearing you know some folks that they need to use their credit card to get through their day to day expenses, and you know it's it's just a shame, and and I feel like you know these credit card companies almost take advantage of people with the rates that they use. 
I know when, when me and my husband were younger and just getting started off, we bought a house early on in life at like 19 or 20. And so we lived on our credit cards a little bit. And what I did was I used to transfer the balance from 0% to 0% to um, not have to pay any interest and help us pay it down as quickly as possible. Yeah, I've done that. I've, I know I've done that myself. I have had a couple of friends that have done that. And it's very tempting because the thing about the credit card is when you're, when you're using it, you don't really feel the cash piece of it. It's just this little piece of plastic that magically gets you some stuff. And so you... You know, you, you might want something like, well, I can't afford that today, but I could put it on my credit card, and then over the next five months, I'll pay it down. And then next thing you know, there's four or five items on there that are all adding up. So your debt gets up, amount's huge, interest rate's high. You flip it over to another credit card. Now it's at zero interest. You pay the minimum payment. You still got the large amount. And then just and you take it to the next credit card company that has zero. And the problem with that is it sounds great that you have zero interest, but the balance itself is just not really getting addressed. Yeah, I think the biggest thing, if you do find yourself with a lot of debt, number one, pay off the highest balances first, even if it's a smaller balance, or pay off the highest interest rates, sorry, first. Even if it's a smaller balance, you want to get rid of the interest that they're charging. Another great thing to do is see if you can consolidate your debt. Putting it all together in one place will help you see that you're paying it down a little bit more and hopefully, you know, create a good habit. Um, since you can see that you're paying it down, you'll be more proactive with it. Great points. Great points. Moving along our little acronym of budgets, we're at the letter G, which stands for goals. And from there, we're looking at your short-term goals, your long-term goals, the income that you might want to have in retirement, anticipated expenses you might have for projects or other things that are going on in retirement, what's your time frame. Bottom line, it's going to come down to, you know, what does retirement look like to you? Um, here, I'd like to say, you know, for a goal, um, we all start out somewhere and we do what we can. And along the way, hopefully you're getting a raise somewhere. So every time we get a raise, um, my family, we like to save 60% of that raise. So 60% of it would go towards one of our savings buckets. It doesn't necessarily have to be retirement, but one of those buckets. And then 40% goes to a lifestyle increase. So maybe we're eating out more or spending some money on some other stuff. So it, it helps keep your expectation of, of living within your means in check and not just you know spending everything that you get. So we like to use the 60-40 rule, meaning saving 60% of your raise and 40 goes to lifestyle. Makes sense. Set that goal, stick to it, then you're going to get some results that you'll be happy with. Moving along, our next part of the acronym is the letter E, which we use to uh, talk about expectations and kind of what do you expect that you're going to get out of your investments? What kind of growth do you think you'll see? What kind of longevity? What's the end result? Different things about managing that expectation. We'll touch a bay, we'll, we'll continue that just a few minutes after this break, and then we'll continue along our acronym of B U D G E T S. Thanks for sticking with us. We'll be back shortly. Welcome back. You are listening to Dollars and Cents here in Central Florida. Got a couple of guest hosts. I'm Rob Field. Next to me, Christina Lamb. We're talking about budgeting for financial planning. We came up with the acronym Budgets, B U D G E T S kind of give you an idea of some things to think about as you're doing your financial planning. We're just moving into expectations, talking about you as an investor, your expectations on how your investments might perform. We were talking a little bit about longevity. How long do you think you're going to live? Um, what's the end result that you're trying to achieve? And then, of course, I'm going to throw out, you got to be realistic when you're uh, kind of managing your expectations. Absolutely. I think a lot of folks like to live above their means, unfortunately. And it's important to kind of keep yourself in check and, you know, make sure you're sticking to your budget and not buying things when you don't have the money to buy them. Um, I think also that comes along with, you know, old saying, not keeping up with the Joneses. It, you know, it doesn't matter what the person across the street is doing or what they have. Um, their situation is not the same as yours. So, you know, I, I don't, I don't think folks need to worry about that so much. And unfortunately, I think we see that a lot. Very true. The um, you know, expectations are funny because everybody thinks that they're going to have saved a large amount and that retirement's going to be very easy and simple and low cost. And it's just not always that way. 
again, I always remind you, we're glad to help you as we kind of run through these, these different parts of the budget. You can give us a call and we can kind of walk you through, give you ideas of what our clients have, have experienced and some successes that they've had. Um, we're moving on to, you know, really getting into retirement. You've, you've kind of thought about your budget and your expectations, and now we're moving to what we call the transition. And we, we view this as kind of moving from the work mode into the retirement mode. This is really a big lifestyle change. Uh, the biggest change you're really going to notice is your budget and the kind of your resources for income, because you're going to, at this point, start looking at your Social Security, pension from investments and, and from uh, retirement plans, the income that you want your investments to kick out, and what you're pulling out is no salary. At this point, there's no income coming in from work, and that's probably been a large piece of your um, investment puzzle. And, and that income turns into a fixed income. So, you know, when you work, you're getting raises throughout time. You might be able to get some overtime. Maybe there's a bonus thrown in. You know, different things happen there. Whereas retirement, it's, it's generally more of a fixed income. Social Security is fixed. If you have a pension, it's fixed. Um, things of that nature. Um, another thing you run into, and, you know, it's interesting, you, folks who come to the office um, say to us is, you know, they're not sure what to do in retirement. So another part of retirement is coming up with a hobby or volunteering or something to keep yourself busy and active in a way that still keeps your life fulfilling. Very much so. You know, uh, Christine and I did a, a radio show just on this subject of transitioning from the workplace to the retirement place. That show, we recorded that back in October 3rd of last year. It's available uh, on a podcast and a, and a rebroadcast. If you go to whatever your favorite social media channel is and Google Nelson Financial Planning and then just kind of skim down or, or scroll down until you get to that particular date, October 3rd of 2022, that show, um, I think the YouTube channel would be pretty good on that one because we had a couple of things we were showing that you could actually visually look at. But that, that show goes into great detail. I would, If you are in the position where you're transitioning from work to retirement, catch that show and then maybe reach back out to us and then let us kind of share some more ideas and some things to help you make that transition go real smooth. So we're blowing through budgets. we got B-U-D-G-E-T-S, what we call as solutions. Uh, we're viewing that as now that you have established what your budget is, recognize some issues that you might have, beginning to, to think about how I'm going to transition, how do I solve these issues that you guys have brought up? And the answer is going to, of course, be your investing options. Um, it's going to require a constant change in your budget and reviewing it. You can't just pick it, buy it, hold it. You can't do that on your investments. You can't really even do it on your budget. So, Obviously, we're going to recommend that you reach out to some type of financial professional, somebody that can understand not just giving you some sales ideas, but who can give you some solutions to the concerns that you might have. Um, we recommend that you use a certified financial fiduciary. All of the financial planners at Nelson Financial Planning are uh, certified financial fiduciaries. That means that we can't just give you some fun ideas. we got to give you what's in your best interest. And so I emphasize that uh, with, with very strongly. We tackle these kind of issues on a daily basis. We're not just coming up with investment ideas. We're coming up with retirement ideas, solutions, college planning. It's a long list of things that you want to keep in mind. We'll help with all of these, um, all of these transitions and kind of get you into that financial budget. So we had balance, understanding, debt, goals, expectations, the transition, and then the solutions you can write that down on a piece of paper. I think we're going to try to put a little one-page kind of outline that you could use for that. But again, give us a call, and we'll be glad to go into more detail. So in summary, as we kind of look at budgets and how important it is, the, the biggest thing to understand is the advantage of budgeting, because that's really the key to set the tone for you to get to where you want to at a certain point. And of course, our goal and your goal should be financial stability. We don't want you to have a lot of debt. We don't want you to have a low income. We don't want you to have high goals and then your expectations are even stronger and yet you can't quite deliver it. So the sooner you start on this, the better. We can't emphasize, we've said it before, you can't wait to the last minute. Just like when we were planning our vacations, we can't just decide one day, hey, we're going on vacation. We got to be able to um, you know, get time off. 
And if you got if you're traveling with other people, they need time off. You got to play, have a place to stay. If you're bringing a dog like I did, then you certainly got to make fun, you know, find a place that's dog friendly. Got to feed all these people. Now you know, got to fly people in or drive people in, and then coordinate with cars. So, just like that, as much as it can be complicated, if you start early, and that's what I did, and that sounds like what you did too, and that's why your vacations were so successful. <laughs> You avoid problems. And again, you know, our, our, our goal is sometimes to be a problem solver. Sometimes it's to be a motivator. We're different things. So it's easier to plan for various stages if you kind of communicate with us and let us get involved. Um, I, I do like to remind people debt managing. Debt management is so important because that debt can be, it, it can get out of control fast. And then you might have a great income and the best investment plan, but if debt's eating you away, you certainly are going to run into a problem. So to make your future easier, watch that debt, give yourself some flexibility in retirement. So we got budgets, right? B-U-D-G-E-T-S. If you think of that, start at the top, look at your balance, understand where you are, keep a good eye on that debt, make sure that your goals are within reason, move over to your expectations, and then as you come close to transition, let us help you. We got some solutions. So if you have any questions on that, please reach out to us. We're always interested in kind of going into more detail on any of these subjects. Again, certified financial fiduciary, always going to do what's in your best interest. I, th I think the key there is, is get some help. Even if you have a plan, find someone that can kind of overlook it. Make sure you're doing um, what the right and best thing is for you. Um, even if you are kind of on the right track, they may offer some advice on other things you can do um, to make that plan a little bit more successful. Or if it's on the debt consolidation side, they may have other opportunities for you, um, you know, to, to better achieve your goals. Definitely well put. And at some point, the whole tax... Uh, question comes into place. We, we didn't really mean to skim over that, but we are also here to help you kind of talk a little bit about your tax issues as you go into retirement. We're wrapping things up. Um, this has been a great episode of Dollars and Cents. We really do appreciate you guys uh, tuning in. If you like what you heard and you want to learn more about what we do, we got the team of certified financial fiduciaries here at Nelson Financial Planning. We are anxious to help you change your life with a successful and cost-effective financial plan. Go to our website if you need some more information. If you hear something you like, call in. If you have an idea for a topic you would like to hear on the radio show sometime in the future, certainly let us know. Also remember, we do not have account minimums because our purpose is to help everyone have a financial plan that results at a lower cost. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you soon. Enjoy your weekend.